Hello there. Welcome to the nth degree. Donna and I have been having a very fascinating conversation, talking about the books we read, talking about the movies we watch, talking about other things that are just coming up in our in our contemplation. So um, welcome to the middle of the conversation. We're going to back up a little bit and then go forward. Hey, Donna. Hi, Rylan. Hello to our listeners. Thank you for joining us. We are just turning this on to have coffee with you, just like we're sitting here having coffee and and discussing the deeper things of God and and what we ponder about, the things we think deeply on that um, we're just being brave to say them out loud in front of each other, and we're going to include you. <laughs> so we are by no means uh, ex- saying that we have all the dots connected. In fact, I got more unconnected dots than connected. Sometimes I feel, especially, you know, about um, what the Lord, what our King Jesus is doing with his bride on earth. And where are we going in the crossing over moment? Where, what is our future looking like as the harvest that's promised to God's glory begins to manifest on earth? And are we are we are we realizing as Christians that our our purpose as the corporate bride is very powerful? And we're we're talking about that. And, and the way you said that was really, really good because I, I was trying to put it into words this morning because I, I have an ecclesia group that meets before we meet here. And the Lord I was looking up and looking at um, like lights in the ceiling and I said, well, why don't I have a skylight? This is in a, oh, I don't want to get you, I don't want to get into the weeds. Don't get in the weeds. I, what, okay. So let me just say, okay. So space is dark and I'm like, well, why can't we see the sun in space? And, and my, I just kind of, I was supposed to be sitting there focusing, but I think that the Lord took me on a little bit of a rabbit trail because he was saying that there is not an atmosphere that can reflect light. And I'm like, oh, what are you telling me here? Are we creating an atmosphere that can reflect his glory or that can reveal his glory? Or are we just in the void of culture and, you know, la, 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 or all about me or whatever. And it doesn't reflect his light and his glory because we're not creating the atmosphere. That's, that's the outcome of, of that rabbit trail that I went on in the second year. And I think that it was on purpose. You know, on I think the other that- hand, we are, I believe we are um, creating atmospheres of his glory, but you cannot measure it in the natural 3d realm. Right. You can only measure it from a higher dimension. You can see it from a higher exactly. dimension. And yes, that's how I, I believe when we corporately gather and worship that glory bombs are going off. I believe they're quantumly connected to places in the earth and and above the earth and in heaven. Yeah. And then also in our own self, where yes. do we have dark places where we're not allowing the, the glory of the Lord to show in because we're not receiving it or we're not like we're just it's purposely dark like if we're not allowing him to you know he's knocking on the door and we're not allowing him he's like oh no no not you can't go there lord you know kind of a thing so it was it was like both and are we creating it in us around us are we creating an atmosphere where his glory can shine or are we in a void you know but you know it's fascinating because his glory did shine on earth he was to the children of Israel the cloud of uh, the cloud by day that mm-hmm. could be seen, mm-hmm. a literal cloud that could be seen, a fire column at night that literally could be seen by everyone in the camp. Yeah. You know this because they moved when it lifted and was ready to was ready to lead them, and they followed. So his glory in me, his glory in you takes a similar, must take a similar dynamic of light, power, movement. And when I follow, I am moved into dimensions of his glory, but also I become a revealer of his glory or a lens that when people look at at my, me and my vessel, they're not going to see Donna. They're going to see the king. They're going to mm-hmm. see the the almighty God. 
And how often do you, does my flesh put a a cover on that lens <laughs> and and not let his glory uh, shine through? And is that not exactly the future we're walking into as the revealer of his glory, where more and more our flesh is transparent so that the light of him, the perfected perfection of of the glory fire, um, purity fire, holiness fire that is in my vessel and yours actually makes a change in the in the physical 3D realm atmosphere wherever I go. I long for that. Oh in absolutely. Fact, in fact that that'll get me out of bed in the morning. Yeah. No, and I... and the faith to have the faith for that that this whole plan of our father is for that because he's showing to powers and principalities who are in a different dimension his Mm -hmm. glory through his his created vessels humanity who follow him right and and the conversation kind of started in a place where we were contemplating um you know what's going on in culture and what are they showing us in culture what are they willing to reveal and what are they trying to hide because it's it's really really funny how it's totally the opposite um everything is is good and you can speak your truth and and you know you're allowed to do all of this except when it comes to jesus then you're shut down you can't, you, oh, that's hate speech. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like it's the opposite of the anything that has to do with Christianity. Or they'll give they'll give credence to um, you know Buddhists and Hindus and Muslims and uh, you know all of these other things, but don't say Jesus. No, uh-uh. don't say Yahweh. Don't don't say Almighty God. Um, I was reading something the other day, and I was like. Oh my goodness. I may have to get that book and just read it. But it was talking about forces of darkness who follow other gods. And we know there are other little G gods that are being idolized. Um, In addition to Lucifer slash Satan, whichever one you want to call him. But um, his, that, that the dark agents of, of those followers they don't just hate Christians. He said they hate or or that spiritual uh, uh, darkness. The in, the enemy force is against anyone who follows the God of Abraham. Well, the God of Abraham includes Jewish people and Muslim people and Christian people. So those three people are what those three people groups are against whom these attacks are the, the, from these fallen gods, these, these, uh, fo- this foe that is the accuser of the brethren and the accuser of God. And so he's, he's against those three. And, and you know, you think about that for a minute in light of current events, and I'm not going there. Uh, you just like, Ooh, Wow, Lord, I just, wow. I know where it was. It was in Gary Wayne's book, somewhere around page 115. I was reading uh, in his second book, Genesis, uh, the Genesis Conspiracy. Sorry, Genesis 6 Conspiracy. Very. We started this by you um, mentioning a Marvel movie and I'm watching a a TV series and they, it's like, they're showing us. It's like right there. But Mm -hmm. when you look at it with the eyes of that are awakened and allowing that glory light in there, you see it. It's possible. I believe to be um, following God and, and Paul said, you can be all things to all people, Right. The scripture says all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. So in a group of people that that want to watch that those Marvel movies, just for all the haters out there, stop, stop judging me. OK, <laughs> it, no. I, yeah. Yeah. Right. But but as a Christian, I can watch that. And this is what I was telling Berlin. I was watching one of those Marvel movies and going, oh, my gosh, 
I see this whole playing out of all these 6,000 years of what God is doing with humanity, you know, all of these, these different things. And, and it's right there. It's, it's being, I mean, Hollywood's just showing you their take on it, but I can watch it and see father's take on it. I can see God's take on it. Jesus take on it. I can see, Oh, wow. Look at that. They think that they they're using Greek and Greek names and Roman names and mythology names. They're using stories for mythology. There is nothing new under the sun. They're yep. just reinventing them and presenting them, you know, with costuming and all that um, in different storylines. But I just, I, I, you watch that kind of stuff and, and some of it is extremely entertaining because it's, they've made it modern, right? It's entertaining. I, and I, you can do anything with CG. <laughs> <laughs> do anything with CG. The deep fakes are pretty deep. That's right. And yet at the same time, the spirit of God lives in me. So if at any time I'm cautioned to turn off the, you know, to turn off what is being projected to me, I do. And I have. And I've walked out of theaters before. I have to. I get it. Yeah. I walked out of a a, a theater, like a play production. Um, so yeah, I have yeah. no qualms about shutting down anything that would mm -hmm. be trying to, because, I, I don't need to receive. Yeah. You know? Because you may not need to receive it in that moment. Whereas in, in a year and a half, you're fine. You can watch that. You see, yeah. God, we, we just put him in a box so, so often. And we think when he, when he, when Holy Spirit says a thing, it's forever. We have, we get to check in, in this relational relationship we have. Um, but there's there's many times that I have muted commercials. I have muted oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, commercials that come on while you're watching a football game or something. And I have just I have said, actually, we're muting that because that sound frequency and what's being spoken does not need to come into my atmosphere. And I know oh, it. I do exactly the same thing. I'm so glad you said that. And that's providing the atmosphere where his glory I'm losing your audio where we're, I can barely hear you. There it goes. Okay. okay. Say it again. What I was saying was it comes back to um, creating the atmosphere where his glory can reign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. If you watch what comes into your atmosphere and what frequencies uh, you're allowing to be projected into it, you're, you're managing and you're um, orchestrating and you're co-creating that atmosphere and the, where yeah. you're going to either have his glory reigning or it's going to be a void. Yeah. I believe that, Berlin. I also believe it it affects your physical flesh. Oh my I gosh, know it affects your thoughts. We know it affects your thoughts. Otherwise, Satan and human agents of Satan wouldn't be using it. Um, but it does affect your thoughts. So put on your armor of God, people. That's what it's there for. Um, you mentioned that. <laughs> We've, I, I, we're looking at the books, electric body, electric health. That has to do with your, you know, what, how you're thinking. Unleashing the miracle within. That's I mean. a good one. I loved that book. Yeah. Uh -huh. So funny that you just said that. And I'm just having to have them right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And don't be afraid to uh, look into other modalities because other modalities of health and healing they will unlock something that Yahweh made. He made it all. He is the beginning and the end. And there is not one thing that has been made that he did not make. Jesus uh, made those things. So, but we, we, we surrendered them to him. We, uh, uh, a lot of times when I'm reading a book, like some, some of those books, I'll have to say, Lord, I need to clean. I need you to cleanse this book. I'm oh, going to yeah. read it, but I need you to cleanse it with the washing of your word. And I'm going to read it with Holy spirit with me so that I mean, I can gain truths that I am I might not be being taught elsewhere, but I can gain that truth under capital T truth, the spirit of truth. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm glad you said it like that. That was good. Yeah, so um, it's just, it's when you are coming from the lens of understanding that there's an underlying truth and then the false truth, reality overlay or the matrix or whatever you want to say over it that they're trying to tell us is the truth and you then you look at these entertaining things or you know you read something or even have a conversation with someone and you can almost like peel apart the layers of what what do they believe or what are they trying to say and what's God really saying and what's where is there a between what God is saying is a foundational truth and what 
it, either this person is believing that you're having a conversation, whether you're the, the entertainment that you're watching is believing or trying to tell you, you know, it's just, it's fascinating when you can see both sides, isn't it? It is. And I think to see both sides, you, you must watch with Holy Spirit. You must engage with Holy Spirit and, and, and look beyond, um, uh, you know, Chuck Pierce, he's the one who, taught me that phrase to look beyond looking beyond is significant in our hour because we are intentionally being dumbed down lied to um and so looking beyond links with discernment mm -hmm. your discernment has a filter called the flesh but your spirit man's discernment doesn't have that filter so you're looking beyond. It's really saying, open your spiritual eyes and ears that Jesus talked about in scripture. Have them cleansed and purified by Holy Spirit. And then watch. We're told to watch in scripture so often. That simply means look. Look to see. Look, what is what is God doing? What is what are the angels arranging in the unseen realm that's trying to happen that I that I get to walk through? I'm a blessed daughter of God. And therefore, I ex I expect to see the blessing. I think, oh boy, that just links back to some things we've talked about about expectation and how expectation is linked to faith. But it it where are you putting your faith? Are you putting your faith in worry and anxiety and a bad outcome? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you putting your faith in expectation? And God is big; nothing is impossible for Him. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And another thing that that um makes me think about what we already talked about before we we actually did a whole podcast on the pause like rather than be reactionary to something you see you can take a pause and say okay what do you say about this situation or you know how am i seeing this through the wrong lens or you know there there can be a different oh yeah that's rather true. than reacting you can bring that glory in and create that atmosphere of his where his glory light can shine, even in a moment of when you're you would typically react. Does that make sense? So um you have the ability to reserve with reaction. Right. You do not have to react. You can watch. You have that ability just to watch and then consult with the seven spirits of God, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus and Father to consult with him. What now must I do? What I mean, that's what Esther did. Right. Esther in the Bible, she had a, a thing going on, a big, serious thing. And she said, I need three days of consultation with the living God. Yeah. And. And we can. um decide which to put on and let me just let me phrase it this way because we were just talking about how our thoughts impact our body and that the frequency of that so i'm actually practicing doing the uh, if i have a visceral reaction in other words if i feel something in my body i usually that i'm trying to this is what i'm practicing now is just stop why am i feeling this does it make sense that i'm feeling this right now because I, it started, and I think I've mentioned this on Instagram, it started, well, not, not it started, but I started noticing it. it in, in, at night when I'm trying to go to sleep and my body would start to panic. So I started there and, and calming that down and bringing in the peace and the truth of the Lord. But then I, then I started looking at when my body is making a physical reaction, like, why did I just suddenly have a feel of, ugh, when I saw that person? Or when I heard a, a, someone talking about that thing and I, and I immediately wanted to go, you know, slap them upside the head. Like, okay, what is that in me? Where yeah, is that coming and, from? Pause. And is it, is it <laughs> pause? Get the, get, get the clarification. Yeah. Is, it, is it something you want to fix in me, God? Or is it actually for my good and you want me to know this because you want me to use this part of it? Yeah, God? yeah, exactly. Where, because I'm not expert in this, I'm so far from perfect. I'm working on 
trying to discern a little bit more about why my body is reacting this way. Is this something, is, is this of you or is it of me? Is this of somewhere else, right? And, and just trying to really walk it out and live in all of our multi multiple dimensions and be cognizant of the flow and the ebb of the energy and where my attention is going. Because obviously, if you suddenly get a knot in the pit of your stomach, that's where your attention goes, right? And you're not paying attention to why sometimes, you know, or, or you're suddenly, you know, afraid or you're looking and you're like, why am I feeling this fear suddenly? From you know? where is it coming? Right, it's exactly. External or internal? Is it coming 3D dimension mm -hmm. or higher dimensions? Is, is it, it of God? Right. Is it a wrong connection that I've made? Or is it a wrong connection? Is it an internal fragmentation of my yeah. soul? Yeah. Or is it, and God wants me to see it so we can heal it? Uh, or is it, is it someone else? Yeah, someone someone else. Is it an astral projection against or, or, Yeah, or just their energy is overriding mine or something, or you know? Or is it a messenger angel from father's realm? Could be any of the above or much, probably much more or combos or whatever. But I guess the point is to just stop and don't go with the default. Uh, so Nothing well. changes unless we change. That that's just been my motto in these last trajectory. You're, in fact, we're responsible for changing the, the trajectory of atmospheres a right. lot. That That's, you know, why are Christians still here if we're saved? Well, because we have an atmosphere to change. And right. people think, well, I'm not going to make, I'm not going to make any difference. Listen, that is a lie from the pit of hell. You're filled with the Godhead. You mm -hmm. being in an atmosphere, I don't care if you're in a restaurant or a parade, you are making a difference. Because you are a connection point, a pillar of our God. Mm -hmm. And at any moment, the, the spirit of the living God can speak to you, through you, by you, and for you. <laughs> and what he's doing when he does that is he's using you as a vessel fit for service. His service, the king's service, the, 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 the kingdom's service. And so you're important very important you are you are and the first atmosphere you need to change is here right if you're thinking that i don't make a difference that's the first thing you need to change right it's you realize how incredibly magnificent you are and what power you have and actually i was just thinking of linda who is on our health team and she works with the morphogenic field well the morphogenic field is a physical representation of the spirit realm of how far out our electromagnetic field, the morphogenic field, our bio field pushes. So if your thoughts are not of God and you're projecting them out, you're literally creating the wrong atmosphere just by projecting that out there. But when your thoughts are, wow, I can make a difference. And I am his image bearer. I am bringing him to this situation. Now you're the, however far out your morphogenic field shows and your electromagnetic field of your heart is actually bigger than your brain. It can go out three to even to eight mm -hmm. feet and beyond. Yeah. They really haven't measured the, the, mm -hmm. the distance, but that's, that's the physical, the way that they can physically measure the spirit realm in the spirit realm. We can, we can push it out beyond, beyond. Oh, yeah. I mean, literally. So so there is, there's science to back this up that we can impact the atmosphere around us. And then by the choices, by the words that we speak, by the feelings that we have, and this is why I'm trying to really manage my coherence of making sure that my, my feelings in my body, you know, they, they go off in left field and I'm like, wait, I'm over here. Hold on guys. You know, I'm going need you into alignment with what God says and what, what the destiny is and what, uh, how I need to be to bring that, the, the future manifestation to my now, you know, and keep, keep reaching forward into the, into the destiny and, and what God says is the situation and bring it to now. And that, that moves me forward and that, that 
create the bigger impact. Hope I didn't go off the rails right there, but I think that um, I think it's all connected. It's so all connected. It's all part of being your being, mm -hmm. becoming who you are becoming, looking beyond because you are not contained to the 3D world. If you are in Jesus and Jesus is in you, you yeah. are linked to the supernatural spirit realm as well as to highest heaven where father sits on his throne. It, it, it'll blow your mind. A lot of these thoughts, but we're, we are rather distracted as humans. <laughs> we just don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I, I just praise Jesus. I, I, here, I'll give a testimony because testimonies to me build faith in other people and glorify God. Um, yeah. But I've known for like, y'all are going to like roll your eyes, get ready. <laughs> I've known for like two weeks that I really needed to come into my office and clean off my desk like do a deep clean. Did I do it when I had the first knowing? No. Why didn't I? Because I would come in here and get totally overwhelmed. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I kept, I kept my spirit man looking for the door of opportunity where in the moment I would have not just Donna's 3D, her physical flesh able to do it. I could have, if it was just up to that, I could have done that, you know, two weeks ago. But my spirit and my soul in agreement with this directive from I felt Holy Spirit and in the process looking for wonder why he told me to do this. OK, mm -hmm. so so yesterday I found that door. I, it was like in the door, a door in the spirit realm opened and I had a moment. I think God works through our moments a lot. I'm mm -hmm. a big moment watcher and I got everything done. I cleaned off this whole desk. I found things that I had lost. <laughs> I found things that I was like, oh yeah, I I meant to to look into that, you know, things that were under piles brought up to my present and and put on my list, my to-do list and things like that, books and all kinds of stuff. So I and today, as I was sitting here this morning before we got on with the Lord, just sitting and thanking him, Lord, this is joyful. Like he told me in the process of cleaning off your desk, I want you to go back through your journals. And I did that. I had a process of time to do that this morning. And wow. I just stepped away from that going, wow, that was really joyful. You are such a speaking God. You are such a God who is near. You are such a powerful God. You are such a careful God with my heart of all the times he's spoken to me, things I needed in that moment. And then I even had a, a portion in my journal where I had a moment of healing from you know, a, um, a wound that I had carried probably since I was tw maybe like between 10 and 11, 8, 12, something like that there. And I went back and read what I wrote about getting healing in that place and a lie base that just got, you know, x by God. And I just was like free of that. So it's just, there's some amazing things that you do when you hear the spirit of God and and give yourself time to roll into the moment so good it's really good <laughs> do we have a bow to put around this because we i was just gonna say we have been all over the world here I, well, yeah i know it, but then it, like essentially it's all about it's about being who we were created to be so we can shift culture so we can bring the, the heaven like bring uh heaven to earth as he commanded us to do. I mean, essentially that's what we're talking about. There's just so many different ways to do that. And so many little nuances of situations where we need to do it <laughs> come to our attention. So. Yes. Yes. So, yes. I want to say one thing in closing, because this is really on my heart to say, if you have a circumstance in your life and you are unsure how to pray for it. Well, first of all, let me, let me assure you that your soul thinks you know how to pray for it. <laughs> but if you're going back to that pause concept, when you have a circumstance in your life that is a difficult moment you've got to walk through, do you not believe that your father in heaven already knows that? He does. So if he does already know what you're facing, does he want to commune with you and sweetly talk to you about this? Yes, he does. 
And to get your soul to sit down and wait on God so that you will know how to pray. I, if there's one thing I want to coach people, it's to wait on God to know how to pray. Because the Spirit of God will tell you very specifically, according to your specific situation, what to ask Father for, how to stand in your armor and defeat the devil with your weapons of warfare. So those are two things. He'll also tell you what to put your faith in. In other words, he'll he'll bring to your mind the promise of God in your circumstance. That's the the rhema of God. What are you saying, God, about this? What where can I put my faith for the outcome of this circumstance that I'm walking through? And we all have them. We have them. We have them in our families. We have them in our states, our nations. We have them in our workplace. We have them in our private uh, moments with God. We have them in just individual relationship. And what God wants us to do is ask his spirit, how shall I pray? Wait on him to know. Because when he drops it, hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. When he drops that in your spirit, now you have not only a weapon, the sword of God. I see you busily writing over there, Berlin. <laughs> but he has, you have the promise of God, which builds your hope, which gets you through the circumstance. And I just want to say to people, if you have a hard moment to walk through or something you're anticipating with a little dread, know that your father sees that on your path already. And he's going to, he's going to shepherd you through that. Jesus wants to shepherd you through that, but you will need to ask him, relate, engage, activate with him to know how do I need to be looking at the situation? What what words do I need to be speaking into it? And and here's here's the thing, because if you've walked with God for a while, you're going to fall back on your last victory with him over Satan. And that is not who God is. He's the current present overcoming one. And so he wants to show you the current present thing to to to. Um, Get, gain your victory over your enemy in and so he you, you want to forget the past but it, i right. agree He's not There's forgetting the past new, but always doing a new thing yes and and because the enemy is ancient he he knows a lot of stuff and the deception comes when he when he pulls a new thing on you well that's you're new in that thing so you need the knowledge and representation of god to get through that the higher power to get through that. So I just, um, yes, we build skills and all that, but, but the part, the good news of being a Christian is that we have the, the present moment of his voice and presence. Good. So, you know, here in my, my parents' house this morning, my worship was more like old hymns because we used to sing a lot, you know, hymns. And so what a friend we have in Jesus. I'm, you know, belting it out through the house. And then it just hit, you know, right now, while you were talking, it, the second line came to me. Um, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. It's, it's the same, right? But what Donna is saying, not only just pray from where you were, but pause and say, Lord, what do you say about the situation? How, what is the strategy for today? But don't forget to do it. Like, don't forget that God is here. He's present. He's a present help in time of trouble. Yes. So very much so. Yeah. Yes. And let me just give you a testimony. I'm, I have, there's something in my life going on and I'm like, how is this going to work? God, I don't see this. And he gave me a dream. Oh, and no. so as I was reading through the dream, not the first day, but the second day, I got a little piece of strategy and how to pray. And then probably seven days go by, but I went back to that dream. And if you're getting dreams from God, then go back and see what he's showing you because he's not going to interpret that dream with you right away the first time. They're deep and multi-layered and it's connected to time. It's connected to where you are in your present moment. 
how engaged you are with him and that can vary, you know? So you just, I just, anyway, praying over it again today, just in general, praying about it, you know? And, and then I was doing something 10 minutes later that wasn't even connected. And I was like, Oh, Oh my gosh, Lord, I see how I need to pray for her now. Right. So I was like rejoicing because she, the, what he told me, it was for me to do on her behalf as an intercessor. And she didn't, she won't know that until glory. Right. But, right. but it'll defeat the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> and the Lord has been showing me um, more things, more ways to pray for healing. You know, if, if anyone is following the spirit centered business over on that podcast, I, I did um, the first installment of Audrey's story and you know we've been really exploring different ways to pray for for her healing or or for the reduction of pain or for various things that are going on in her life and so it it is a journey and it, it's um it's giving me more tools in my tool belt by stopping and paying attention okay, we've prayed all the normal stuff, right? That was always, that's just like a standard, right? So what is the specific strategy for this situation and how are we going to do this differently? You know, so, so good. Because again, let's just bring it right back around. It's bringing God's glory into the situation. Mm -hmm. How are we bringing his light? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. so. okay. All right, we better land this plane, girlfriend. We've, yes. we've circled around, um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen in our audience. We appreciate you. And um we do get we do see some of your feedback. If you're um, you know, commenting in the comments or giving us a thumbs up, whatever platform you're watching on. Um, thank you for doing that. You can find me over on MeWe if you're looking for Donna Nieper. You can find Dwellhouse uh dot net. That's my website, and I have at presence over on MeWe. I like me, we instead of Facebook. So that's where I am. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm on Spirit Center Business and you can get us both on Spirit Center Business as well by yeah. uh, going to the coaching session section. And, uh, and we're both on Goodreads. That we're app. Both on Goodreads, right. Goodreads. All, I have all my books that are all piled up around me that I'm working on yeah. reading. And yeah. I just, I'd love to connect with people over at Goodreads. It's just, yeah befriend us or follow us or whatever it lets you do over there because we'd love to connect and know what you're reading yeah right right we need to do some shows on the books that we've read too um we also appreciate your five-star reviews over on i think you can do that on spotify and on um I, apple itunes and maybe on iHeartRadio. i'm not sure about iHeartRadio, but i know you can on spotify so every time that you do any of the click any button of any kind that supports us it helps beat the algorithm it helps get the word of the lord out there and um you know increase our audience and increase um the the amount of heaven that we can bring to earth so we appreciate you yes all right you guys thank you Bless so much you all. yeah until then till next time i guess take it to the nth degree <laughs> <laughs>